Um, so hello, everyone. Wow, first of all, that keynote this morning, amazing. All the live demos, all the stuff that was announced. Uh, I'm assuming that everybody got to see it, right? Quick uh, show of hands who went to the keynote. If anybody hasn't raised their hand, OK, good. I think that was 99%. Um, so today, uh, also quick show of hands, who was just around for part one? OK, so mostly everyone. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing that we saw for part one with Docker for Mac, with Docker for Windows. The same thing. So if you don't want to see Docker for Windows, you can now leave. OK? I'm just kidding. We're going to be, doing, we're going to be extending that flow uh, on Docker for uh, Docker Cloud and talking about automation and, and collaboration. So whether this is your first or your fifth DockerCon, I'm sure you're familiar with this message, right? Build, ship, run. At Docker, we are building tools and services that cover the entire application workflow. From the moment you're developing code, whether on your machine or not, uh, all the way to that code hitting production, we're working through the entire flow to develop tools and services that enhance that experience for developers and for operations. Uh, now, Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows make it very easy with the native application to do that, uh, but those flows are isolated to a single development machine, right? So with Docker Cloud, we stand a few of those things uh, around build, ship, and run with a number of features. So with build, you have things like you can actually do your Docker builds in the cloud. Uh, there's things like integration testing, uh, privacy controls, where my builds going to take place. Are they happening in my infrastructure? Or are they happening in Docker Cloud's build farm? Uh, you can control the parallelism. And we also have that uh, official images to help you build your applications. Now, for SHIP, we, as you all know, have a public registry. We offer private repository management. The latest feature that we introduce around security scanning, which is very cool. It gives you the security stance of your applications at any point in time, and it gives you updates uh, when security vulnerabilities are found. And then there's run. You can very easily provision new infrastructure on any cloud provider. You can do load balancing, security uh, service discovery, uh, one-click upgrades of your Docker nodes. But it really it's not about the features. Uh, Docker Cloud boils down to two things. First and foremost is around automation. When I say automation, I mean continuous integration, continuously, continuous delivery. It's about enabling teams to do more faster and really focus on what truly matters. So with Docker Cloud, your teams can automate that end-to-end -end flow, that continuous integration flow from the moment you're writing code to getting it running in staging, to creating that image, that continuous integration, continuous delivery, end-to-end, -end, fully automated. Now, again, if you take it back to the part one that we just saw a minute ago, Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows are running your laptop. Your laptop is not a continuous machine. The moment you shut down your laptop, your tests stop executing. The moment you shut down your laptop, the staging environment is no longer being updated. What Docker Cloud does, it is extends that experience to the cloud so you do get that end-to-end -end experience from the development all the way to your staging or production environments. The second thing that I want to highlight about cloud before we get to the live demo is around collaboration. Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows, again, is largely a single developer experience. It runs on your developer machine, on your laptop, or your desktop. And it empowers developers to become Docker developers. What Docker Cloud then does is is the place where these Docker developers go to collaborate. Docker Cloud, with a feature that we're introducing in just a couple of weeks and that I'll be uh, demoing in just a few minutes, you can now have your Docker developers collaborate in the entire process of creating an application. Not just collaboration around source code in GitHub or Bitbucket, but actually extending that collaboration from GitHub and Bitbucket all the way through the CI flows and the continuous delivery flows. So that as a developer, I can see when one of my peers has updated staging. I can see when the latest changes in the staging have made it to production. I can see when we're rolling back, when a new image is produced, or when the services all together are changing. So it really is around that message of collaboration. You have the experience native in your laptop. You now want to extend the experience to your team in the cloud. So those are the oldest slides that I had. A few more than David earlier, right? He only had one slide. Uh, but hopefully, I'll run through it very quickly. And now we really just want to get to a live demo. An end-to-end -end flow using Docker Cloud, extending the Docker for Mac and Docker for Windows experience. For this demo, I'm going to have a hypothetical case. It's a company we've called 
cloud vote. We run a business very similar to the one you saw earlier in the keynote. We have a voting application. And we've set up two environments. We've got staging, which is configured in a GitHub branch called staging. It's got three folders uh, for a working application, the results application, and the voting application. Now, staging environment is fully automated. From Git push to building new Docker images to running continuous integration tests on those images to automatically scanning every one of those images that is produced for new vulnerabilities to automatically redeploying the latest images into our staging environment, which happens to be running on two nodes in DigitalOcean. So the entire flow from a developer's perspective is really just that I'm working on my application and everything is automated all the way to staging where I can see the changes. But it's not just me that gets to see the changes. Our entire development team can actually enjoy that. Production environment looks very similar for CloudVote. It's against the master branch in GitHub. And it's fully automated for the continuous integration flow. The continuous delivery is actually a manual step. We want to make sure that everything is good in staging before we push to production. And unlike staging, production is running in five nodes in Amazon Web Services. Now, seeing how I did spend a good half of my talk, or this slides talking about collaboration, it would make no sense for me to do this demo here by myself. So I'd like to invite Fernando Mayo, my partner and uh, engineering manager at Docker Cloud, to come join me on stage. I think we've like 20 times already, but yeah, let's you know, do it. for the scholarship. There you go. Uh, so it's first day, uh, Fernando's first day at the job at CloudVote. Uh, hello, Fernando. Hello. Welcome to your first day. Thank you. I trust that the team has helped you set up with GitHub yep. and Slack. Slack. And what else? And Docker for Mac. Yes, I have it. Awesome. So Fernando's first task has been to uh, improve, if you remember our voting application, the results page shows cats and dogs. We're actually going to be changing that to show the emoji counterpart. And we're going to be using that um, Docker Cloud Flow to do that. So, Fernando, I've opened an issue in GitHub for you. OK. I've sent it to you. You know what to do. Hopefully, it's your first day. You've got Docker for Mac installed. You should be all good to go. Um, I have access. I need access to Docker Cloud. Oh, right. I have not given you access to Docker Cloud. Let's do that. Let me go ahead and invite you to the organization. And once I give you access, you'll be able to see all of the repositories, and you'll be able to see our, our staging environment and deploy directly to it. OK. Now, your computer is not going to save my password now, is it? Uh, Hopefully not. All right. Perfect. So this is the interface for Docker Cloud. I'm going to change context here. I'm going to go to the Cloud Vote organization. I'm going to scroll down to Teams. And we've got the developers team here. And I'm going, what's your Docker ID? Um, F-E-R, Mayo. Oh, I know. You know that. I see it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we've only run through this demo a few times. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to invite Fernando to the organization. Uh, to the developers thing, which will give him access to our staging environment as well as all of the repositories. Fernando, you've got access to the Docker Cloud. Cool. Good luck. I'm going to go enjoy my coffee. Let me know when the PR is ready. OK, thank you. So I'm going to log your account out. <laughs> so I don't touch anything I shouldn't. OK, so I have been given access to the InstaVote app repo. So you're familiar with this. You saw it this morning. So I have an issue here assigned to me. So apparently, I have to change dogs and cats for emojis. OK, so let's go and do that. So I'm going to fork this repo to my namespace. I'm going to clone it. So oops. So let's clone that. OK, and now, because I have Docker for Mac, I can do Docker Compose up. Should be able to test the application locally. It's doing things. Some errors there. OK. Um, I should see here the voting application and here the results application. OK, let's make sure it works. Cats and dogs. OK, so now I have to change the emojis. So I'm going to go and look for the emojis for cats and dogs. 
So this is a table for emojis. So let's search for dog, dog face, and take this code here. I'm going to open the code. So this is the same application as this morning. So I'm going to open the results app. I'm going to search for the HTML page where I can see here the cats and the dogs labels. So I'm going to change the, what did I copy? Uh, this is the dog face. So I'm going to take the dog face, put it here. And I'm going to search for the cat face here. I'm going to copy this. OK, I saved the file. And because I have Docker for Mac, all my changes should be automatically updated uh, locally. So I'm going to refresh this. And there we go. We have the new, uh, the new changes live. OK, OK, thank you. Now, I really like dogs. So what I'm going to do is going to add a little enhancement to the application. Very small. No one will know this. So the dog boats come twice. I think it should be fine. So I'm going to go here. Check the code. OK, so this is where it count, is counting the, the boats. So I'm going to do if the boat eats a dog, then I'm going to multiply the boat. So let's try that. So I bought dogs. I have two boats here. That seems good. Cats, I only have one boat. Great. I did a change. I did a, a small improvement. Now, the other day, I read on Hacker News about this library called libxml2, which apparently makes everything much faster. Like, it will render emojis like 10 times faster. So I have to try it. So let's try it in my first PR. So I'm going to go to a Docker file where it builds the results application. And I'm going to add here libxml2. I think it's the best thing ever. I think they're going to love it. They're going to raise my salary. <coughs> OK, so let's see. So I added the awesome libxml2 library to the code. I added my little enhancement for dog lovers. And also, I did what they asked me to do. Seems fine. So I'm going to add this. I'm going to check out a branch for my feature. I'm going to commit awesome feature. I'm going to push this. Great. So let's go back to GitHub. It has detected my new branch. So I'm going to compare and send a pull request against the staging branch of the main repo with all my changes. OK, looks OK. So let's do it. OK, Borja, I'm done. Oh, there's some tests running here. I don't know what it is. Well, I don't care. It's done. Wow, that was fast. Yep. Oh, and I see that the tests are executing. Awesome. Did somebody tell you about the test? Uh, no. Oh, well, this I don't is know a great opportunity to talk about continuous integration tests. So as you can see here, when Fernando uh, opened that PR, tests have started executing. Now, the way Docker Cloud does testing is actually very, very powerful and very simple. Everything is based on Docker Compose. Want to go ahead and open the Docker Compose okay. uh, file in, in um, oh, this one. The results. So what we do is we add an additional service to the Docker Compose. Now, this way of testing works both locally in the developer's laptop as well as in the cloud. We add this new service, SUT, which stands for System Under Test. And then you define which file needs to run, which is going to execute the test. So if you go to the uh, test.sh file, mm -hmm. we'll see that we define a very simple test that will post two votes, one for cats and one for dogs. And then it will try and, rec and uh, recover, read those votes to make sure that two votes were actually collected. Now, this is, if you think about it, a full end-to-end -end integration test, right? We've got the Python application uh, in which um, you cast your votes, which is going to store them in the Redis queue, which are then going to be picked up by the Java worker, which is going to record those votes in the PostgreSQL database, which are then going to be picked up by the Node.js results application. So by posting two votes and then reading to make sure that two votes were casted, we're doing a full-fledged end-to-end integration test. If you run this test in the cloud, there's an additional feature, which we call hooks. 
you have the ability to run additional commands at different points in, the, in, in time when your tests are executing. So you can have hooks on the before and after the build takes place, before and after the test take place, and before and after the Docker push uh, to push that artifact, that image into the registry take place, giving you the ability to interface and interact with uh, other services that you may need to. So let's see if the okay. tests have. Whoa, Fernando. <clears throat> hey, it was the simple feature. All you had to do was change cats and dogs for their emoji counterparts. I did. But the tests are failing. Do you think what it could be? Do you know? Well, I added a small enhancement. A small enhancement? Yeah. Um, what exactly but was it that? It shouldn't enhanced? affect that. Well, you know, I really like dogs. I love dogs. So I made a small enhancement for that. What exactly? Well, no one is going to notice dogs, boats come twice. Should be fine, right? Now, that unfortunately is not fair for cat lovers. Fernando, I'm going to have to ask that um, you remove that little enhancement. Um, are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. Let's okay. make sure that votes for dogs and votes for cats count just the same. OK, I'll remove that code. So let's remove the enhancement. Let's check. OK, let's add this. Amend my commit. And push force my feature. OK, let's check it. OK, test of running again. OK, so now Docker Cloud has uh, been notified that the commit has changed, and it's going to try and run those tests again, uh, which is a great opportunity for us to talk about Docker build in the cloud. OK. Should so, I go to cloud? Absolutely, yeah. Let's go. So the way Docker Cloud handles builds, uh, as I mentioned earlier briefly, there's, you have the ability to run the build on your infrastructure, on your nodes, or in Docker Cloud's build farm. Now, the, this is for those organizations that may have some privacy constraints, some, some privacy concerns, that want to make sure that the Git clone happens in infrastructure that they own, and that the Docker build happens in infrastructure that they own, and ultimately the Docker push for the image happens from a node that they own. They have the ability to do that. But we also offer a build farm uh, that allows you to make sure that those nodes are not always available, wasting resources, will provision infrastructure on demand as your tests and your builds require it. Perfect, that's the interface. So now we also, uh, we are demoing here the ability to uh, do this from GitHub. Uh, we also have support for Bitbucket built in. And we just pushed today a beta feature that actually allows you to have different selectable instance types. So that when you're using the build farm in Docker Cloud, you can select which type of instance you want uh, the test to take place and the amount of parallelism, which is based on the number of private repositories that you have in Docker Cloud. Let's check if the test have passed. OK, let's check. Still running. Should be a minute or less. Should take about a couple more minutes. Yeah. In the meantime, I can do a, a dance. <laughs> now, remember, we're doing Pass. this. Perf oh, nice. High five. Wow. Yep. Nice. So we can merge it. So on. the tests have passed. That uh, bias towards dogs has been eliminated. I'm sorry for all the dog lovers here. Now let's, let's merge, merge that. It. Okay. Let's do that. So once I merge, what happens? OK, so it's been merged. Now, remember back to the slide that I posted on the staging environment being fully automated, right? This has now been merged into our staging branch in GitHub. That's again going to trigger a new set of builds and tests, because you can never run enough tests. When that successfully passes again, now this time, unlike before, an actual Docker push will take place. A Docker push of the new artifact that's been created will be triggered and sent to the Docker registry, and a new image is going to be created. Okay. And Docker Cloud is going to detect uh, that that new image has been created. And if you go to the service, <coughs> the results app, which is running in, in our staging infrastructure, you you'll see that results has been configured to be auto-redeployed. So that auto-deploy uh, tag in, in results, you see that it has been turned yeah. to on. See that? What this means is that the moment a new image is detected, Docker Cloud is going to automatically redeploy that, that service in a rolling fashion to decrease downtime, although this is our staging environment. Um, this is super powerful. With a single git push, we merged that into staging, and we went through the entire flow. OK, so let's check that staging still has the old version. OK, Okay. that's fine. 
Now, another feature that we like to highlight here is the Slack integration. I know I've been talking to some of you that a lot of you are using Slack to collaborate, to talk amongst yourselves. Docker Cloud integrates natively into Slack, so you can see a history of everything that's going on, from a new image being built, from a test or a build failing, to a service being automatically updated. Did they invite you to the Slack group in Yes, they the did. Vote? So let's open that up. There we go. Awesome. So we see the few events that have taken place in there. We see that we had the vote that failed, a new one that completed, and then they see that the last one just passed, and the service has been auto-redeployed. Yep. So we have results application automatically redeployed in staging. You want to check to make sure that the changes happen? Let's check that. Yeah, my features in staging. Awesome, first day at job. Yes. So to celebrate this, um, I'm going to tweet, live tweet, because I always like to do a live tweet with the audience. I'm going to nominate Fernando as a Best uh, Developer of the Year Award for DockerCon. Cool. And we're going to do it with the audience. OK, everyone? Smile, if I can change my camera. Woo! Come on. You were not smiling over there. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to show later in Twitter. OK, awesome. Let's go to production now. Right, so we should go to production now, except we are handling people's data. People are voting here, so we have a pretty high stake when it comes to security. So before we push to production, let's make sure that this fix, this new feature, this enhancement that you did, uh, didn't, by any way, introduce any security vulnerability into our image. Okay. So the way we do this, we go to our repository, mm -hmm. and right from within there, okay, we got the results up. Okay. Tags. And if you click on tags, awesome. Well, I guess it did not introduce any security vulnerability. This is not quite as we had rehearsed it, but it doesn't matter. OK, so what I'm going to do? This is where we pull up the video? No. <laughs> reload the page. Oh, reload the page? Yeah, it's a scanning. OK, oh, it is scanning, right? Yeah, I super smooth. That. So there's a new scan in progress, all right? So we're going to give it a minute. The scan may take a, a, a little while um, for, for it to take place. And since I've already rehearsed this demo a couple of times, I can already anticipate that the changes that Fernando did for one reason or for another actually introduced a security vulnerability in our image. Now, innocently enough, that security vulnerability was actually introduced by Fernando adding libxml2 to our library, right? You think that something as harmless as libxml2 is not going to introduce a new security vulnerability into your image, but it actually did. So if we click on it, we are able to see right from within Docker Cloud's UI exactly which command and which vulnerability was introduced into which image. So unfortunately, Fernando, I am going to have to take back the tweet congratulating you and nominating you for Best Developer of the Year Award. And we're not going to be able to deploy to production. Oh, well. It rendered very fast, though. <laughs> it does render very fast. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. That's it for the demo. Uh, since we have a few minutes, we'd like to open it up for, um, for questions. Before I do that, I guess I can also take the opportunity to recap uh, very quickly um, the message around Docker Cloud, right? Automation and collaboration, those things that are, those workflows that you're not able to do on your laptop with Docker for Mac are the perfect workflows to try and run in, in Docker Cloud. Uh, I see a few people lining up for questions. Go ahead. Yeah, so just a, a lightning bit of constructive feedback. Um, you're one of the, I've enjoyed these two sessions, but the part one and part two are one of the very few sessions that didn't have a synopsis in the agenda. So I know there are a lot of people that were kind of uh, putting DockerCon feedback through the app going, it's great, but I've no idea what's going on. Is it for Docker committers? Is it for Docker attendees? And so just that feedback. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Go ahead. We'll switch back. Yep. Hi. Um, I was curious how, let's say, you have like AWS security uh, uh, um, secrets, like your secret key and your access key. They would differ from like staging and production. How would you go about? Um, hiding that, like you, you wouldn't want to commit it to your source code, um, but they definitely differ by environment. Yeah, so 
uh, those secrets are not stored in the code, so you have to configure those in Docker Cloud beforehand. So we store them uh, securely in our servers, so there's nothing uh, referencing those in the code. So the code is just the application. Um, what you have in the code will be your stack for staging and production that you deploy in cloud, uh, but that stack uh, is independent from the actual cloud provider that you will use. Uh, so that is a, YAML, a Docker Compose YAML file with no secrets, um, and the secrets, you enter them directly in Docker Cloud. So it's all stored in Docker Cloud. So early on in the demo, you showed organizations and being able to add other users to your Docker Cloud accounts. When is that going to be GA? Within the next couple of weeks, we should be able to make it to GA. Uh, we're running a, a private beta internally, so I'm happy to take your Docker ID and invite you to that. Thanks. I think you touched on like pre and post hooks for doing like unit tests. Uh, where are those defined at? Like if you wanted to load uh, some test data into maybe your, your MongoDB or something like that. Right, so we, within a folder in the source code, uh, just called hooks, you're able to define the pre-build, post-build, pre-test, post-test, pre-push, Okay, just like Git then. Right, okay. so it's, it has to be in the, in the source for it. Um, yeah, and, and those hooks are very useful for creating, for example, a small Go images. Um, because if you want to build your binary using a different image, and then just uh, build the resulting image with just that binary. You can do that with hooks. Uh, your, um, your source code can have the Go code, uh, and it can have a hook that actually runs a container to, to speed out the binary, and then the actual build is just adding that binary to the image and pushing uh, that to the hub. So you can have uh, automated builds for uh, you know, complex uh, build uh, workflows. So for Go, it's, it's very useful. Um, one thing I'm interested in seeing, um, something I, some of the, I have my own solution, and I'm kind of see, want to see how other people are doing this. But two things: um, remote debugging um, in the cloud from, like, say, Ruby Mind to the container, and having kind of that automated. Um, and then also um, how you deal with complex persistence, and if you need to do things like uh, DB migrate, DB seed. Um, DBC, migrate DBC with test data and running that from the container and that whole, you know, automation work chain. You know, I think it's the first order. part of the question, did you? No. So just like ideas and stuff like that. It doesn't have to be now, but like follow up. But I was, one of the things I'm kind of looking at Angle as far as in the scope of, you know, Docker and development, you know, yeah. So <laughs> I mean, for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so remote debugging. Uh, um, I haven't tried that, but I guess if it goes through the TCP port, you can do that uh, with the cloud. The redeploying and keeping stuff, uh, we do, um, what we do is we delete the containers and we start new ones. We try to reuse data volumes, um, so they keep uh, state in those volumes. Uh, but if after redeploying a new version of the app, you have to do some migrations or something, you either do it in some container that boots up uh, when redeploying the stack, or you can uh, exec into, the, into one of the containers and execute the commands manually. Mm, yeah. All right, okay. thank you so much. Thank yeah. you for being thank here. You. Enjoy the rest of the show.